Hi everybody, this is Mr. Polly, and welcome to Podcast 5.4, the effect of intermolecular forces on different things. So we're going to explain how intermolecular forces explain the state of matter, talk about intermolecular forces and viscosity, and volatility, and compared to ionic compounds, and how water is crazy. Including high boiling point, surface tension, volume expansion, wind frozen, yeah, blah, all that stuff. State the two factor term molecular polarity. Let's hop to it. So, intermolecular forces determine the state of matter. Strong forces hold together better. Okay? Look at this right here. This is held together the best, right? They kind of vibrate a little bit, and those are solids, so they have the strongest intermolecular forces. Liquids roll over each other, so they have. A little more dynamic and roll over each other and gases um, act completely independently of each other so the strongest forces would be a solid and the weakest forces would be a gas and remember the weakest forces are dispersion forces the strongest forces are H bonds remember oh I just said that didn't I most likely a solid middle force dipole dipole weakest dispersion most likely gas by the way dispersion forces and this is what you need are the tiebreaker for all of the other ones they are tie breakers. So if you have two um, dipole-dipole ones, the dispersion force will be the tiebreaker. Bigger molecules, bigger molecules equal more dispersion forces. For and that means the forces are stronger. Okay, You can actually have so many dispersion forces that it could be bigger than the other ones, but it's basically using for tiebreaker. Predict the state of matter for these guys. Well, I know C's and H's are nonpolar because I've been trying to get you to know over and over and over again that C to H, the difference is 0.4, so that's nonpolar. OH, oh, that's H bonding. So if that's the strongest one, I might say that's a solid. C to H, hey, didn't I just say C to H is a uh, nonpolar? So that means it only has dispersion forces. So that means that's probably a gas. Ah. H to F, hey, 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 that's H to F. That's H bonding. That's probably a solid. And then I've got OF2. Oh, I don't know what that is. O, O, F. Ding, ding, ding. Connect the dots. La, la, la. Not a linear molecule. It is bent. Okay, so I look at my little periodic table of electronegativity values. F is 4.0, oxygen is 3.5, so it is polar. So this is the center of negativity and this is the center of positivity. So that means it's a polar molecule, so it has dipole, dipole, and dispersion. So it's probably going to be in the middle, so I'll just call it a liquid. By the way, those answers aren't right, but that gets you thinking about the way you're supposed to. Viscosity is resistance to flow. Strong forces increase the viscosity, so you have slow flow. Weak forces decrease viscosity, fast flow. So we're going to say this is the fastest, okay? This is the slowest. So if that's true, these are the strongest, and these are the weakest. So if that's true, this is probably H bond. That doesn't have to necessarily be, but and this is dispersion force. Okay, so you can see how it's slowly pouring for all those. Okay, there was a molasses flood, and I talk about how molasses is a flow, is a slow flowing thing. There was a molasses flood in 1919 for real. There was a giant tank car, and it is bolted together in different places. And what happened was they put it in a poor neighborhood, and the tank car, it, as, it, as it heated up, the molasses expanded, and this thing blew up. And really, it didn't blow up like that way. It opened up. So it opened up like doors opened up. And it blew up so that like all of the molasses came pouring out. It was four or five stories tall. So imagine a, a five-story tall water thing exploded it swept up a bunch of people killed dozens maybe hundreds of people and things like that this is a book that describes it um, a very very good book 
and I could throw a whopping 10 extra credit points at you if you read it and give me the sixth grade book report. We'll talk about that as we go through it too. It's a good read though. Volatility, ability to evaporate. So something is volatile. I remember in my high school French, bole means to steal or to fly. So volatility is the ability to evaporate, which would be fly away. Oh, high volatility liquid turns to gas and flies away. Fly, little gas, be free. It has low intermolecular forces. So that would be like dispersion forces. Low volatility, it's so attracted to itself due to strong intermolecular forces, so it'll stay liquid. So for example, if I have, maybe I'm this for something of X's. If I have a bunch of X's right here. If these X's aren't very attracted to each other, do you see how it could just leave and it doesn't matter that much? But if these X's are BFFs, what happens is they're attracted to each other and they all stay together. So if it has low attraction, right, low intermolecular forces, it turns into a gas and flies away. If it has low volatility, it would have strong forces, and it stays together. Surface tension. Liquid is very attractive to itself, like Dante only hangs out with himself, he won't talk to anyone else, and will not react with other types of molecules. Okay? It forms a dome. So one example would be this. It's like a drop of water. right? So it's so attracted to itself, meaning these other circle particles, that it stays together. If it wasn't very attracted to itself, what would happen is this particle would come here, 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 and what you what you end up with is something that is exactly one layer thick. Okay. Another surface tension thing is if these guys are so attracted to themselves, it holds together so much that this marble will not be able to penetrate the surface. Okay. Weak forces, there's little surface tension, it's flat. Remember I talked about this would be one atom thick. If it's strong, it forms a big dome. And tough, poor things to penetrate it. So for example, this guy right here isn't breaking the surface because they're so attracted to themselves. Ionic compounds do not use intermolecular forces to determine their state, volatility, or viscosity. They do not use intermolecular forces. What do they use? They use ionic bonds. Okay? So these are strong ionic bonds, which are intramolecular forces. Hold each ion together, which is much stronger than intramolecular. So are, are ionic compounds very volatile? Remember, they're strong, so will they turn it into a gas? Are they very volatile? No. Are they very viscous? So they're very attracted to each other. So will they resist flow? Remember, viscosity is resisting flow. Resist, resist, resist flow? Yes. Will it be very gassy? So will, is it likely to be a gas? No, because the particles are so strong, likely to be a solid. Why? Because the forces are so strong. Melting point and boiling point. Strong forces, strong forces make the boiling point. Now the boiling point is the temperature you turn to a gas. So if you have a strong force, you're not likely to be a gas. So strong forces make the boiling point go up. Why? Because the particles are so attracted to each other, they stay a liquid. Strong forces make the melting point. So if they're a solid, they're very, very attracted to each other. Remember solids oh, would line up like this and they would just kind of vibrate. It takes more energy for them to then be able to roll over each other. Strong forces make the melting point go up because the particles are so attracted to each other. They stay a solid. Those are boils on something's face. I'm melting. Water has H bonding, which is really strong. So by the way, this is a slide about water. Water has special properties because of H bonding. There are tons of obsessive test questions about water's H bonding. Water has a really high surface tension. Why? Because it's H bonded. So it has a skin, so we can actually float a paper clip on it. Water has a really high viscosity. So it flows slowly. Why? Because it's H bonded. Water has a high boiling and melting point. Why? Because it's H bonded. 
Water has a low volatility. Why? Because it's H bonded. Now all of these are talking about the strength of the bonds for its mass. So basically, water's mass says it's a second grader, right? Water's mass says it's a second grader, but water plays like it's a junior in high school. Bigger molecules have tons of dispersion forces, so their values can be higher than water. So again, again, bigger molecules have lots of dispersion forces, so sometimes it can overcome those things. Water is one of only two solids that are larger when they're frozen, and this is because of the H bonds. Oh, I thought I'd like this picture, and I don't. Water looks like Mickey Mouse. This is what ice looks like. This is the attraction, okay? So, it, by the way, if water is larger when it's frozen, that means ice floats on itself. Most things do this. This is like ethanol, which is a type of alcohol. And it is more dense, okay? So notice the shape of water. It makes a ring. This ring makes it larger. This is empty space, right? You'd think you could fit like a little another water molecule in here, and it doesn't. So it is not. When you do that, it has this empty space, which makes it bigger. So it's larger when it's frozen, so it floats on itself. This is incredibly important because this is what ice does. If ice did this, it would kill fish. Okay, because what would happen is every layer would then fall down, and then a new layer would freeze and fall down, and then a new layer would freeze and fall down, and lakes would freeze solid. If lakes froze solid, no life could make it in the thing. Molecular polarity is found by two factors. Number one, bond polarity. Delta En, electronegativity, right? And two is a shape that doesn't cancel. That's assuming you're trying to make something in there. And that those shapes deal with symmetry. Oh, there's not two T's in symmetry. Symmetry. Review. H bonding is strong. Holds particles together. Intermolecular forces affect the state of matter, boiling point, melting point, viscosity, volatility, density of a solid, like honey has a high volatility. Ionic compounds use ionic bonds for all of those things. Covalent compounds do not use covalent bonds. What do covalent compounds use? Intermolecular forces. Ah, uh, toodles, toodles.